I wanted to do a realistic test on shotgun microphones by someone who actually owns all the uh, the top end models. Got a Sennheiser MKH 416, the industry standard for movie and uh, nature recording, the ME 66 with K6 powering module, the ME 64 module. Here we have a Rode NTG2, a Rode NTG1, and the uh, quote-unquote poor man's MKH416, which is the Rode NTG3. Um, there are a thousand places uh, on YouTube and other places you can compare sounds like uh, ME66 versus uh, Sennheiser MKH416. So really the internet does not need another comparison like that because there are plenty out there. I'm going to give you a different comparison by someone who owns all these to give you a quick rundown as far as making a logical decision on what to purchase if you only want to purchase one or two of these shotgun mics or just one based upon either cost and or what you want to do with them. Um, first let's go off of cost. If there's only one mic out of all of these that you were to purchase uh, it would be the ME66 with the K6 powering module and or my favorite combination the short little ME64 module with the K6 powering module. The ME66 is the condenser head and the K6 powering module will accept 48 volt phantom power or runs off one AA battery. This will screw onto the ME64 head. These uh, two mics, these two heads, the ME66 and the ME64 are stunning. And uh, now does the ME MKH416 have a better sound? Is it the industry standard? Is it the go-to model for uh, for movie recording, yes, it's a much more expensive mic. It is much more full and robust. The MKH416, and don't let its little thin size confuse you, it is an extremely heavy microphone. It's even more heavy than the Rode NTG3. This new is a thousand dollar microphone, or you can get them used for about six hundred to eight hundred dollars. But used on the MK and uh, the ME66 or the ME64, either one of these heads can be had used like new condition for $150 to $200. K6 powering module, roughly the same, $150 to $200. Typically, you can find the ME66 with the K6 or the ME64 uh, used mint condition for $250, $300, $330. Let's just say $300 used mint condition. That would be the uh, condenser heads with the K6 powering module on eBay. Now, these are the best ones to purchase out of this entire series. Uh, what's the difference between the Rode NTG2 versus NTG1? And the difference is a built-in, non-removable battery compartment. So instead of powering off a Phantom, which you can do on the Rode NTG2, you can insert a AA battery for camcorder use. What you cannot see in this video is the weight. The most heavy of these three is... Uh, most heavy of these uh, shotgun mics is the MKH416. is the heaviest out of all of them. Next heaviest is uh, brass bodied plated Rode NTG3. It is also, as far as uh, money being no object, if you were to purchase, what is the best shotgun microphone here, bar none to purchase if you only have one microphone. Um, it's almost a toss up between the ME66 and K6 powering module for $200, $250 used, like new, or $800. These are kind of hard to find a deal on used for $800 new. That's under map. Amazon sells them for a thousand, so unquestionably the MKH416 blows the rest of these out of the water. The reason why? Well, it sounds like a large diaphragm studio condenser microphone, except you have all the advantages basically. Let's put it in short, because like I said, you can get audio samples anywhere online. You have all the advantages of uh, the full robust sound of a studio large diaphragm condenser microphone, but with the attributional qualities of a shotgun microphone. So that would be the MKH416. That's why it's the go-to industry standard for million dollar movies and nature recording, etc, etc. Now if I were to only have one here and I was to say, um, which mic, forgetting about cost, would you, if you'd only have one microphone here, which one will blow you away as far as its utilitarian use, its sound, its flat response, its ease of use, its robustness, and it's absolutely unquestionably uh, the Sennheiser uh, ME66 or the 64, it's almost a toss up, and the K6 powering module. They make a shorter module than this, it's the Phantom module. It doesn't have to have a battery compartment, but it's the same thing. 
Now don't let the size of the ME64 Sennheiser head confuse you. This has extreme directionality, far better than the Rode NTG2 or NTG3, which you would not think would be the case because it is so short. But this short little ME64 head by Sennheiser has amazing directionality. Now, which one has the best sensitivity? Unquestionably, the lowest are the NTG2 and NTG1. Like I said, these two are the same, except battery. Battery power and phantom power capability in NTG2. NTG1 right here is phantom only power. Um, same as the MKH416, the Rode NTG3 is phantom only. So MKH416 and the next lowest on this lineup here is the Rode NTG3. These are also two very heavy microphones. What you cannot see in this video is how incredibly light the ME66 is. Just incredibly light. Even with this K6 powering module, it weighs next to nothing. It would be perfect for camcorder mounting. Actually, the perfect camcorder head use uh, mounting would be the ME64 with the K6 powering module. Now, new uh, eBay price. Uh, not retail price, $200 all day long, either on the Rode NTG2 or the NTG1. For $50 more, or, or $100 more, uh, you should absolutely unquestionably, much more sensitive, much more directionality. Also, the quietest microphone of any, any mic here is the ME66 and the ME64. I found them to be both identical. That's also why nature recordings, recordists use these. The ME66 head and the ME64 head are designed to have extremely flat, uh, accurate response, and they are quiet as a graveyard. As far as self noise, the ME66 and ME64 blows everything else out here, everything here out of the water. So, extremely lightweight. Um, very high directionality, amazingly high directionality also on the ME64, which you would not think because of the, the short interference tube on the ME64 head. But amazing directionality, you would not expect it of this ME64 head. Uh, not much less than the ME66, amazingly enough. You'd actually have to listen for a good bit to, to tell the differences so far as the side rejection on directionality and the interference due between the ME66 and the ME64, which is good. Uh, actually, videographers swear by the K6 powering module and the ME64 head. So, the K6 powering module powers up the ME62 head, which is a very short omnidirectional microphone, but right now we're talking about shotgun microphones. This is the ME64 uh, head. And uh, videographers swear by this ME64 with a K6 powering module, which will accept either 1AA battery or phantom power 48 volts. So, uh, if there were actually to be anything here with the powering module, it would be unquestionably. So, you can only have one mic, forget about money, we can only give you one. This would be it, the ME64 with a K6 powering module. Incredibly lightweight, you, it feels so chintzy if you have your eyes closed. You didn't know it was German engineering, that you just think it was cheap Chinese junk because it was so lightweight. Um, extremely sensitive, high side rejection, quiet as a graveyard. Now, does the MKH416 sound a lot better? Is it more full and robust than the, the ME66 or the ME64? Yes, it is, but you're talking about a thousand dollar microphone versus like new used $250, basically. Say $250, say $300. That would be the ME66 head or the ME64 head with the K6 powering module. $300 all day long for these two combined or these two combined, used like new. Very, you have to turn up the gain quite a bit, so you're introducing a lot of noise in the Rode NTG2 or NTG1, so the least sensitive of all these mics, unquestionably. A lot of people on the DV forums have said, well, I like the sound on the NTG2 or the NTG1 better than the Sennheiser. Uh, ME66 or ME64, well you have to turn the gain quite a bit up on the NTG2 or NTG1. Uh, most sensitive, um, MKH416, unquestionably, also the Rode NTG3. NTG3 actually has a wider frequency response. Nature recordists do not like the Rode NTG3. Has a lot of noise, but that has, has a different frequency response than the ME66. Nature record us, this is their love machine, the ME66 with the K6 powering module. Is so lightweight. It is so dead quiet. It has amazing side rejection and amazing sensitivity. It is just 
and it's just really a perfect mic. Um, my perfect ideal is the ME64 with the K6 powering module. And then the Rode NTG1, NTG2 are great entry level mics, but for the cost of these new, which is $200, if you spend another $50 for used like new, absolutely don't even think about getting the Rode NTG2 or NTG1. Get the ME66 or 64 and the K6 powering module. They also make a Phantom powering module. It's, it's a bit shorter, but it only takes Phantom power only, so forget about that. Don't get the don't get the K6P, which stands for Phantom Power. Get the K6, which is Phantom or 1AA battery power. If money is no object, then absolutely get the Sennheiser MKH416. Very heavy microphone. Um, of course, rel heavy is relative. Um, I love the amazing sensitivity on this brass-bodied uh, anodized the Rode NTG3. Superior build quality. It's just phenomenal. Um, it literally is, as many uh, expert recording artists have said, uh, that it is like the poor man's MKH416. But you can actually get um, people that wholesale out of New York you can get these for $750 all day long new and $500 all day long new. They're marked used, but they're actually new. So say $750 and $500. These even though uh, one has a battery compartment it was Phantom or battery and this was Phantom only, NTG2 and NTG1 both the same mic $200 all day long new I wouldn't think about used ones obviously uh, ironically enough sell for the same price as new ones so I would not even think about getting the NTG2 or the NTG1 while they might sound a little fuller or richer than the ME66 you actually have to turn up the gain quite a lot on the NTG2 or NTG1 also whether it's the ME66 or the Rode NTG2, Phantom Power uh, using Sound Devices 702 recorder or Zoom H6 portable recorder, you'll actually get a different uh, sound quality as is necessarily the case uh, due to the uh, the power that's being uh, drawn off either the AA battery or Phantom Power from the uh, portable re uh, portable recorder. You'll actually get a different sound quality whether you're powering from Phantom or a AA battery. That's why these Pro mics over here are Phantom Power only. Not the only reason. So, only one mic, cost being irrelevant, you know, money doesn't matter. So you can only have one here that's just perfect, it's dead quiet, it's incredibly sensitive, it's got great side rejection, it's just fun, it's very lightweight, it's like you're packing around nothing. Then it would be the K6 powering module and the ME66 head. But ideally, um, this short little uh, interference tube on the ME64 head is just phenomenal. Um, my choice would be the ME64 and the K6 powering module. For full, robust sound, although it is more noisy, this very expensive MKH416 is more noisy than the ME66 or the ME64. You have basically all, uh, in short, so you can find a lot of audio comparisons online. This is meant to be a comparison in a, of a different style, so you can compare some of the attributional qualities instead of the sound. There are plenty of sound examples, this versus that. This one sounds like this, fine. Well, I want to compare everything here and talk about all the qualities, the plus and minuses of each one. This you know, Sennheiser MKH416 is more noisy than the ME66 or the ME64. These will stun you. They're just so dead quiet, and they're so lightweight. You cannot see that here, but they just weigh nothing. If you were not to know it was a Sennheiser, you would just think it was cheap Chinese junk because it weighs nothing. It feels chintzy, although if you look at it, you can see it's superior build quality. And it is. But the cost difference between the NTG2, NTG1, and the ME66 or S64 with the K6 powering module is negligible. So don't even think about the NTG2. Does it have slightly better sound? It depends. That depends on what you want to use it for. Nature recordists use the ME66 and the 64 video recordist where money is no object what they mount on top of their ten thousand dollar three chip camcorders um, some really high-end professional videographers that I have a lot of respect for they know what they're talking about they can buy whatever they want they can use whatever they want they swear by the ME64 head it's uh, dead silent great side rejection and despite its little uh, short uh, interference tube it has amazing side rejection. It is just an awesome video mic. It's perfect for nature recording. It's just an amazing bloody ass mic. Um, does that mean I have any hate for the NTG3? No. This is the noisiest and the most expensive mics, but that has a different frequency response, so that doesn't mean it's inherently bad. It comes with this nice little carry tube, which the Sennheiser should come with. 
but that has nothing to do with the microphone. So anyway, I hope I was giving you a comparison of the microphones. There are plenty of uh, sound comparisons out there. There are plenty of those you can find on the web. But I wanted to give you a cross comparison of the attributional qualities. So let's go over it really quick. Full, robust, industry standard workhorse. You got all the pluses of a studio condenser, but all the attributes of a, a quality shotgun microphone. Obviously, the reason of having this is clear. The reason, if money is no object, people are using the MK, MKH416 over the ME66 or the NTG3 is rather clear. All the plenty of, of films have been made with the Rode NTG3. All the post production work uh, shows that the MKH416 is far more robust than the NTG3. There are a lot of pro videographers that have made the comments on that that they thought they could use both and they had to end up rejecting the Rode NTG3 and strictly go with the uh, Sennheiser MKH416. Extremely lightweight, dead silent, silent as a graveyard, very lightweight, robust construction, amazing directionality on both of these modules, the ME66 head and the ME64 head. Just incredible. Perfect for video use. This is what nature recorders use. Uh, having a pair of these is just indispensable. Like I said, if money is no object, you can say you can only have one here, what would I have? Since I've, I own all of these, what would I have if I had to give the rest of them away? It would be, it's kind of a toss up between the 64 and the 66. I'd probably say the 64 and the K6 powering module. I actually have better, something last thing I wanted to say, a better side rejection, better directionality out of this short little ME64 head. Not my opinion, but hardcore fact. I have better directionality, better side rejection out of this little short uh, ME64 head than I do out of the road NTG3. Yes, believe it or not, that's the case. Also, a lot more quiet, a lot lighter weight. This is one heavy sucker. It's a brass body. These are alloy. Very, very lightweight. Um, just a joy. Incredibly sensitive. Just so dead quiet. Anyway, I hope I was giving you a full spectrum of view of the industry standards of shotgun microphones. You can cross comparison analysis of of what each mic's attributes are and compare all of them with each other before you can make an informed decision. There are plenty of other videos out there where you're able to hear the sounds. Well, this one sounds like this, this one sounds like that. Well, that's great, but you just need to understand and have some information on some of the other attributes of these microphones that you won't hear in the recordings like, okay, well, that's great. Well, the NTG sounds like this, but what they don't tell you in those other videos is that the gain isn't so great. You've got to amp up the gain quite a bit on the NTG2 or the NTG, uh, NTG1 to get the same uh, output as you do with the ME66, the MKH416, or the Rode NTG3. These are nowhere near as sensitive. You've got to crank up the knob and increase your gain on the NTG3, NTG2, or NTG1 to get the same levels as you do with the NTG3, or MKH416, or the ME66, or the ME64. Dead silent, rather noisy, but have a different frequency response. A hair noisy, but full robust. It's obvious why it's the go-to standard. Very heavy. The MKH416, despite its little size, is a heavy little sucker. Very heavy. I think it's a brass body anodized. I could be wrong. I know it's not steel, but I'm almost certain it's brass like the Rode MTG3 is. Very expensive, so you're talking $800. Of course, Amazon price, basically, full retail price is $1,000. You can have them new for $800 versus like new, used, all day long for either these two or these two, between $250 to $350. Let's say, two, let's say $275. That's what the current going price is of 2014 on Mint, used, like new. K6 powering module with ME66 head. So now you know the pluses and minuses of each mic's. Slightly insensitive, noisy, rather noisy, very sensitive, extremely dead quiet, very lightweight, very robust, what nature recorders use. The perfect video mic head is unquestionably the ME64. It just weighs nothing. So if you want to put this on top of your little handy cam camcorder and drop an XLR to mini jack plug to your little handy cam camcorder, you have got the most amazing damn mic for your little prosumer handycam camcorder the k6 powering module this would be the full length of it weighs nothing credible side rejection just dead silent great gain very sensitive just blow your mind so uh thanks for watching and let me know if you want to make another video on any other information about these i might make some sound recordings but there are plenty of those out there already so thanks